Hello lovelies, welcome to Night Free Formula, my name's Freedom, thank you for joining me. So in today's episode, I wanted to talk about um, burning bridges with the narcissist and why it's actually probably a really good thing to do. Um, and I'm also going to give you a couple of ways that you can do it. So why do we burn bridges? Well, this is for me personally, um, one of the main reasons that I initially did it was burnt bridges was well there was a couple of reasons one i didn't trust the narcissist obviously um because you know we'd been together for a long time he'd he had his hooks well and truly into me um he i was very easily controlled by him he knew exactly what to say and do to manipulate me and even when i managed to finally get away from him um, I had this awful realization that he still had a lot of um, influence on, over me and the ability to potentially make me go back. Like it took a long time to get away. So you have to understand, like I'm really not joking when I say this, you know, my, uh, my escape from the narcissist probably took me at least maybe almost 18 months. I mean, it definitely took over 12 months. So... You know, it was one of those things, it, it took me a long time to do, it was super hard to do, and then I had this realization that, you know, that once I'd gotten away, that um, even though, you know, that caused obviously a narcissistic injury, um, you know, he was still up for the challenge, you know, he didn't want to let go that easily, even though he had new supply very quickly in the piece. So the other reason was, I also didn't trust in myself. So I didn't trust in myself enough to know that, you know, if he did try and come back, that I would actually be strong enough to tell him to, you know, to stay away. So I needed to put some distance between me and the narcissist super fast. So there was a couple of things that I did. Um, and like I said, I would actually suggest that you do these things too. If you you have come to that realization, like I did, that things are never going to change. You know, it's always going to end up uh, badly. It's always going to end up, you know, the way it's, I mean, it's just one outcome. There's always going to be this one outcome with the narcissist. Like I said, it never ends well. And it all boils down to how much time you want to waste before you make the commitment to yourself to walk away because the other thing just quickly as narcissist is not ever going to just go oh you know what you deserve better than me you know i'm 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 treating you really badly you know you go you go be happy go find someone else and be happy they're never going to do that right so if they haven't discarded you right and you've been together with them for you know consider considerable amount of time the odds are uh, decreasing you know that, that you're actually going to be discarded and so you will have to escape if you want things to end differently if you want a better happier life so for me I had gotten to that stage all um, there was still love there on my behalf no doubt about it but all hope was lost and I knew I had to go so like I said I didn't trust him and I didn't trust myself that much either so I knew that burning some bridges was the only way that I was actually going to, um, you know, to stop him from coming back. And because, just quickly, there are two kind of uh, avenues that you'll be attacking, essentially, or two kind of ways that you're going to, you know, when, when I'm talking about burning bridges, there's two things. So f you need to create physical distance between you and the narcissist, narcissist but you also need to um, impact their ego in a negative way so create a narcissistic injury now you need to be super careful with this obviously you don't want to be in a situation where you create this narcissistic injury and you are in um, the proximity you know for the backlash right because there will be backlash when a narcissist gets butt injured someone is going to have to pay so this is why you create the physical distance before you create the narcissistic injury. Um, <clears throat> so in my particular instance, um, the very first thing I did after um, 
having him or asking him to leave, kicking him out, um, was there was uh, police involved. Now, getting an AVO or an intervention order in in, in South Australia, sorry, in in Australia, that's what it's called. Um, getting that AVO created a psychological boundary, or it was a win on my behalf. It annoyed him um, hugely that I had actually gone and done that, you know, because his ex had done it. I had been trained and told for years about how, you know, that's not what good women do, essentially, you know, um, blah, 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 so whatever. So I did the very thing he didn't want me to do, which was get the police involved. Okay, so the beginning of the end, get the police involved. Now, I did it. I'm glad I did it. I absolutely don't regret it. The police took out the AVO and in the in, um, initial, um, in the beginning, they took it out. I had to attend court and um, give evidence for it to be extended. I can't think of the word is, but essentially I had to attend court um, for it to be put in place. But the police put the initial one in place, the temporary one, and then we got a year long one. And then when he breached that repeatedly, I had to go back to court and get it extended for three years. Now, that created a huge narcissistic injury because he had this realization now that, oh, he actually couldn't come back even if he wanted to, right? Because I think in the beginning stages, I think he was really just thinking to himself, you know, that he had that much control over me that, you know, it would just be a matter of time before I came back and I wanted him back or I let him back. Um, and that had been our pattern in the past. So, AVOs, so if you can get the police involved safely, do it. Um, another thing that I did was I could create a physical distance. So I moved out of the town that we were in. So now it's a little bit harder for him to actually come and find me. You know, now he doesn't know where I am, which also, once again, creates a narcissistic injury. Um, all of these things. Now, you've got to remember, every time you create narcissistic injury, every time you do something that makes them angry or hurt, right, you've got to remember that it is now no longer safe for you to go back, which is one of the reasons why I was doing it. Because even if I wanted to, I knew that I couldn't because I knew it wouldn't be safe and that literally I was in danger of being abused physically and, and psychologically. Um, or that, you know, it could get really bad. Like I knew that I wasn't physically safe to go back. Um, so for me, I set myself up with that. You know, I created an environment where he was, you know, absolutely blindsided. He did not see it coming that I was going to leave him. Um, he didn't see it coming. And then he didn't, he wasn't expecting the, the force of which I put up the boundaries. So another thing, you know, I, like I said, I did things um, where I, you know, let him down, you know, in his mind where I said I would do something and I didn't follow through. So I just did all these things that, you know, they were little and they were subtle, but they were all things that showed him that he didn't have any control over me, which is important because like I said, you're, what, what you're trying to do here is you're trying to have an impact on his ego. You know, you've got to remember, narcissists, narcissists are very, very egotistical. Um, they're very easily damaged, wounded, you know. So creating this, this, um, this narcissistic injury for me was a good strategy, which is also, you know, the upside of having my YouTube channel, I've got to admit, you know, for him, the reality of having his private information kind of blasted on the internet, even though no one knows his name and, you know, all the rest of it. Like, the fact is that it really irks him knowing that I'm out here talking about this stuff. Um, to the point where, like I said, you know, if his new supplier dropped dead tomorrow, there is no way he would think about skulking back into my neck of the woods, which is exactly what I want. You know, I don't want to ever have to deal with that again. So here's some more tips and things that you can do that, like I said, will burn, help you burn the bridges and the ties that connect you to the narcissist. So block their number, 
have it all going to like so with text messages and things like that it'll all go to a blocked file on your phone you can check that once every six months or so if you want to but the good thing about that is you know it it helps you you psychologically disconnect from the narcissist you know because we're so used to when we're with them you know we're so used to them saying you know jump and we say oh how high you know they trained us very well like that they train us to accommodate their every want desire you know their every need we do it we do it all the time you know we were trained and so to put a a barrier between him and his ability to talk to me or get a message through to me has been very powerful because what ends up happening is as soon as you don't reply to a narcissist's text message especially if they're being emotional or demanding um, as soon as you don't reply to it it creates a narcissistic injury you know because they think that you're ignoring them which makes them even more angry which is why it is so good because like i said it's like this win-win you don't have to deal with whatever their demands are um, you don't have to deal with whatever they're you know when they're being loving and sweet you know you don't get to hear about it until six months later when it's too late which is beautiful so like i said this just creates that boundary this psychological space from them it's a way of ensuring that you know that you're never going to go back all of these little things because just think about this right if the narcissist had the capacity when they were feeling all emotional and in their fields you know if they had the capacity to just pick up the phone and talk to you in that moment right well in that moment you might get sucked back in you might think to yourself oh he's not so bad or what we had was really special or oh i remember you know or you just might get in your own feelings over him which is why we do this stuff like i said we're creating distance we're creating distance between you and the narcissist and we're damaging their ego so that they won't want to come back and even if they do we know that it's going to not be safe for us to come back so there are lots of little ways like i said that we can do this but i think that these are the key things um let me just have a think about this another trick that i um or tactic that i used was i told my adult children very early on in the piece as to what was going on what my escape plans were and where i was at now the reason that i told them um and this is why i'm suggesting it to you is that it kind of it's almost like you know when you have an addiction right for some of us you know some people obviously who are listening who have never had an addiction you know won't understand this but if you have had an addiction to you know um, alcohol or other drugs or sex or love or you know any number of things you know you, you know um, how how important it is to confess to someone that you trust about what's going on so if like it's like having a sponsor so essentially you know let's just talk about it through the lens of like um, Alcoholics Anonymous so for or, or NA so you know when you're a member of na or aa you literally ask for someone to sponsor you and what that person's role is amongst a lot of things is to just you know keep an eye on you and when you feel weak you contact them and they are your strength when you feel weak so i would suggest if you have friends or family especially those who you know they already knew about him and you know with the narcissist they already knew they were a bit sus on him or whatever just tell them the truth because if you do have moments like i said when you feel weak you will be able to rely on these people to snap you out of it you know to bring you back to reality because we need to stay reality based right the narcissist has sold us um, they've future faked us they, they've sold us on a dream about something that is not real you know it really isn't real so um, if you can confide in a family member someone that you trust who has an allegiance only with you you have to be super careful with this one that you do not confide in someone who still believes the trust and um, believes in the narcissist you know false construct and their mask 
and the illusion, you know, the, who believes the person that they're pretending to be. You cannot have anyone um, close to you who has that kind of relationship with a narcissist. You can't confide in those people, you can't trust those people, unfortunately, um, because they will inadvertently go back and spill the beans on any plans that you're making or anything that you're up to with the narcissist. So you need to be super, super careful um, with who you confide in. But like I said, if it's your mum and she's always hated him, tell your mum, you know, or your sister or aunt or whoever. So these are, the, like I said, these are the kind of things that we do to, to put literal barriers between us and the narcissist, you know, barriers of distance, of time, like I said, when you don't answer their text messages until six months down the track when there's no kind of emotional connection. So barriers of time, distance, um, then we put physical barriers of other people, you know, and psychological barriers of, you know, of, um, you know, his hurt, and, you know, his narcissistic injury, his ego, you know, having all of that, like I said, between you and the narcissist will protect you in the long run. Because the more stuff that's between you and the narcissist, the harder it is for them to just hoover you up and come back your way. So the more likely when things are going wrong with their new supply, they're a lot less likely to try and come back to you as they are to just keep on moving. It's going to be a lot easier for them to find new new supply, you know, than to double back to you. Because um, let's just remember this also. Narcissists only go backwards temporarily. You know, they're like sharks. They're continually moving forwards. If they do ever go back to their former supply, it's purely because they don't have any other options for fuel um, and it's only going to be a temporary thing. Remind yourself of that also. All right, darlings. Um, I know it's been a long video and um, I hope that it's helped someone though because, like I said, getting these barriers in place will keep you safe.